My name is Kenya Shorter, and today I will discuss with you the topic of fabrication and how that relates to the work of philosopher John Stuart Mill. To begin, I would like to share some background regarding John Stuart Mill. So who was he? He was a English-speaking philosopher. He was a British philosopher, um, economics, and moral and political theorist in the 19th century. Um, some of his work included politics, ethics, and social and political philosopher, to name a few. But however, his most famous work was his book on utilitarianism. Utilitarianism is defined as actions are right in proportion as they tend to promote happiness, wrong as they tend to produce the reverse happiness. Another definition on the principle of utility is defined as our actions have consequences and those consequences count. The best decisions have good consequences for the largest number of people. The greatest happiness for the greatest number. And on the right side, you see um, John Stuart Mill, his book. And on the left side, you see just his regular picture of who he was. The history on utilitarianism, according to the Stanford Encyclopedia, says that utilitarianism is powerful and persuasive. It also is generally held to be the view that moral right action is the action that produces the most good. The principle of utility, of utility as it relates to fabrication. According to the Merriam-Webster, fabrication is to create or make up something such as a story in order to trick people. So tie it together, fabrication and utility. Uh, fabricating sources, especially for a major publishing company, can result in determination and a bad reputation for the publishing company, which is the reverse of happiness, which is what Stuart talked about. Um, it's the reverse of happiness, and it also shows how there are consequences for our actions and how our actions may not only affect us, but others as well. So as you see, when you fabricate stories, you get terminated, and it not only affects the individual person, but the company as well and the public in general. And there are particular current event articles I specifically found on iMedia Ethics that detail um, certain situations in which the person or the, the fabricator that wrote something that was fake, um, they were either terminated and it affects not only the person but the overall publishing company and the public. One deals with Juan Thompson from The Intercept. And he was fired for faking quotes from his story. Even more, he tried to cover up his tracks by creating fake email accounts. So as a result of that, Intercept not only fired Thompson, but they had to take an additional step in apologizing to the public for the fabrication and contacting news outlets for reported the stories. Now, the second article involves um, a fake Fuser press release. And um, Fuser is a company for Viagra. And there was supposedly a hoax going on, and there was a press release that was sent that wasn't right. And it was retracted by the Washington Post. And they're still on the, trying to figure out who exactly went about posting that. There are also a couple past current event articles that also deal with fabrication as well. The one is Christopher Newman, Newton. He was a reporter for the Associated Press. And he was fired in 2002 after the wire service discovered he made up sources for at least 40 of his stories. The second involves Stephen Glass. In 1998, Glass was fired from the New Republican after he was caught fabricating sources in his entire stories for the magazine. Then there was Jason Blair. Jason Blair, he resigned from the New York Times in 2002 after it was discovered that he had licked the material from other papers. He invented scenes and he filed stories from places he had never been. Next we have Janet Cook, who won the Pleasure Prize for the feature writing in 1981 for her Washington Post profile of an eight-year-old heroin addict, Jimmy's World. However, Jimmy turned out to not exist. And then we have Jack Kelly, who was a foreign correspondent and pleasure finalist who resigned from the USA today in 2004 after he was caught working with a translator to mislead his editors. So in sum, 
And to conclude everything all together, Mill's principle of utility applied to the current event dilemmas in the sense that their actions ultimately they produce the reverse of happiness. And Stuart, his whole um, philosophy on utilism is that you want to be able to produce good. And by all the current event articles, you see that they did the reverse of producing good because they made up sources and they fabricated their articles and they ended up being fired. So their poor decisions resulted in poor consequences for the large number of people, which in this case includes the company, staff, and the public. I believe Mill would have handled this situation the same way by determining the fabricator and apologizing to the public because he believes that by promoting happiness, the consequences are then good. And just to finalize that completely, I'm going to read the quote um, by John Stuart Mill again that says, Actions are right in proportion as they tend to promote happiness. Wrong as they tend to produce the reverse of happiness. By happiness and intended pleasure in their absence of pain. Thank you.